Welcome back sports enthusiasts to ATG Sports Plus. I'm Zach Haiku with the ever insightful Tsuginoski. Great to be here Zach. Let's kick things off with a recap of the action from the FEA Grand Prix 2. Nicole Dallas is leading the pack but Emily Blueberry and Pasta Lopez aren't far behind. Shifting gears, the SRL Premier Series had an adrenaline-filled race at Darlington. Kudos to Luke Carmona, who emerged victorious with Aaron Robbins and Donovan Michalski rounding up the podium. In the SL PGA Championship, the leaderboard is tightly contested with Alex and Poppy Williams vying for the top spot. That's all for today's rapid recap. Stay tuned for more drilling action on HEG Sports Plus. Time for our coverage of the FEA Grand Prix 2. What a race we had at the Summer Night Circuit, right, Sakino? Absolutely, Zach. That eight-corner track really brought out the best in our drivers. Now let's get straight into the action from races 1 and 2. In the first race, Amy Blueberry really put on a show. Starting from the second position, she took the checkered flag and posted an impressive fastest lap of 25.439 seconds. And Valkyrie was hot on her heels, Zach, starting in fifth and finishing in second place. Our pole setter, Nicole Dallas, ended in third, though. Right, Tsukino. Race two was a bit of a redemption for Dallas, though. Starting fifth, she claimed the top spot with a speedy lap of 25.358. Pasta Lopez also had an impressive run, starting third and finishing in second. And Emily Blueberry still managed a podium finish, climbing up from 7th to 3rd, but action doesn't stop there. Let's take a look at the GP2 Drivers' Championship standings. Yes, Nicole Dallas has taken the lead with 150 points, but Emmy Blueberry is right behind her with 149 points. And we can't forget Pasta Lopez, he's right there with 147 points. It's incredibly close, Zach. And when we look at the driver stats, we see Dallas leads in terms of race starts, average points per race, and average race result. But Blueberry is not far behind. She leads in race wins and fastest laps. And Lopez is proving to be a formidable competitor as well, ranking third in average points per race and average race result. Absolutely, Zach. It's clear our top three drivers, Dallas, Blueberry, and Lopez, have been delivering outstanding performances. The competition is heated and it's thrilling to see how closely matched they are. I couldn't agree more, Tsukino. So folks, stay tuned for more thrilling action in the FBA Grand Prix 2. This competition is far from over. Let's jump back into the pulse racing action of the SRL Premier Series, which just unfolded at the infamous Darlington track. What a thrilling race we had last Friday, Tsukino. Absolutely, Zach. Our hats off to number six, Luke Cremona, who claimed the winner's laurels. In a tightly contested race, he was followed by number 14, Aaron Roberts, and number seven, Donovan Mochalski, coming in third. Yes, and it didn't stop there. The fourth place was claimed by number nine, Morticia Veloda, followed by number 51, Marcus West, in fifth. Let's not forget the rest of the top ten. Made in Canada, R.D. Ligon, Christina Cartel, Romeo Hightower, and Becky Elker drove home in positions 6 to 10, respectively. Right you are, Tsukino. And rounding out the rest of the race, we had Piper Barrow, and lisa Bellick, Podisica, Taylor Aralo, and Dave Keeler finish in positions 11 through 15. And some notable performances indeed. Komarno started from pole, and Mokchalski posted the fastest lap of the race. Not to mention Made in Canada, our rookie of the race, who came in an impressive sixth. Now, if we wind back the championship standings as of May 17th, Aaron Robbins was leading the pack with 286 points, closely followed by Morticia Volota with 280 points, and Dovian Machowski in third with 260 points. Yes, but after last night's racing, I am eager to see how the leaderboard will evolve. Tsukino, I think our fans are in for some exciting changes this week in the SRL Premier Series. We've received some unfortunate news from the world of motorsports, Tsuki. That's right, Zach. It appears the sixth season of the FEA Grand Prix 1 and 2, as well as the GT Super Endurance, have been postponed. 
Luke Carmona, the FEA president and owner of LC Racing Circuits, released a statement earlier this week, citing some significant financial difficulties that might even force the closure of the sim by 9th or 10th of June. In addition to financial hurdles, Carmona's real-life work schedule might interfere with his ability to manage and organize these events, making the postponement necessary. This decision certainly was not made lightly, but Carmona emphasizes the necessity to ensure the quality of the events, rather than pushing ahead under strained circumstances. He's expressed his sincere apologies to all drivers, teams and supporters who were eagerly awaiting the new season. He shares their disappointment and frustration, but believes this is the best course of action for the community. Despite the challenges, Carmona remains hopeful. He's actively seeking solutions to secure funding and is considering adjustments to the 2023A FVA GP1 and GTSC schedules to ensure the final two events can take place at suitable locations. And importantly, he's promised to keep everyone informed about the developments regarding the postponed sixth season and encourages any ideas or suggestions from the community. Carmona's goal is clear. Return to the track in January 2024 and deliver the high-level competitive motorsport experience we all know and love in the world of Second Life. Until then, he's thanking everyone for their understanding, patience and support. Here's to hoping for a swift resolution and the return of the exhilarating racing we all enjoy. Racing fans, let's take a look back at Monday's exciting SRL Indy Pro Series race at Carmen Air Super Speedway on the 15th of May. A thrilling victory for Aaron Rubb and Zach. He took first place at Carmen Air with Candy Tomorrow not far behind, finishing second. Absolutely, and Donovan Michalski put on a solid performance as well, finishing third. Luke Carmona, the pole starter for the night, managed a respectable fourth place, while Morticia Villoda rounded out the top five. Right. The middle of the pack saw some competitive racing too, with Kelly Kiori in sixth, followed by Romeo Highwater, Taylor Aralo, Becky Acker and Kevinch Ivanovic in top ten. Interesting to note that Candy Tomorrow, who finished second, clock the fastest lap of the race. As we turn our attention to the championship standings, it's Candy Tomorrow again making waves. She's leading the pack with 136 points. Morticia Filota follows closely in second place with 126 points, and today's winner, Aaron Robbins, is sitting comfortably in third place with 104 points. Rounding out the top five in points are Donovan Machowski and Taylor Erolo, with 194 points, respectively. This series continues to offer high-octane thrills, and it's incredibly tight at the top. We'll be keeping our eyes on our top three as we move to our next race. Definitely, Zach. The action is far from over. The series will be heading over to Tokyo next week, and our drivers better have their passports ready. Let's delve into the 2023 SLPGA Championship Tournament, hosted by Eagle Creek Golf Course. The tournament has been a spectacle so far, spanning four rounds. Absolutely, Zach. On May 13th, round one was dominated by Poppy Williams, shooting an impressive 24 under par. Leading the pack, following closely were Taylor Voxel and Duran McKeenan at 20 and 19 under par, respectively. Two days later, on May 15th, the second round saw a tie for the top spot. Ponman Haaland and Poppy Williams both shot 21 under par. Moni Kexi, Gary Hansom and Alex were hot on their trail, each at 19 under par. Moving on to the third round on May 17th, Ponman Haaland led the charge with a score of 20 under par. Lily and Tommy kept things exciting, both scoring 19 under par, while Poppy Williams wasn't far behind at 18 under. And in the latest round on May 20th, Poppy Williams and Alex tied for the top spot once again, both hitting 20 under par. Erison and Lacey Rossini closely followed at 18 under. All these rounds have influenced the SLPGA Spring Tour leaderboard. As it stands, Alex leads with 345 points, closely followed by Poppy Williams at 335 points. 
And don't forget about Lexi, Erison, and Lily, who are putting up a good fight, occupying the third, fourth, and fifth spots, respectively. This is setting up for an interesting end to the tournament. It's still anyone's game with these skill for contenders. Indeed, Tsukino, the championship is shaping up to be a nail-biter. It'll be thrilling to see how it all pans out. Attention wrestling enthusiasts, prepare yourselves for a week bursting with virtual wrestling events in Second Life. Our calendar is chock full with appearances and renowned wrestlers globally. Indeed, Tsukino, the adrenaline starts flowing this Sunday, 9am SLT with OEW Apex, located at Takeda Bay. Anticipate a tr triple threat match for the OEW Hardcore Championship, where Skillex will face off LBA and David Hogg actor. Plus, we have Nina Pratter versus T.S. Pierce in a one-on-one -on -one match. There's more. The Diamond Sands Championship will be in contention in a fatal four-way match with the reigning champion Tank Ventura banned from even viewing it. Furthermore, as witnessed on the previous Ascension episode, Josh Pofo will contain with Bannock Og for the OEW World Heavyweight Championship in a no-DQs match. In the main event, Mama T will defend the OEW Women's World Championship against Honey Pot in a ladder match. All these and much more await at 9am SLT when OEW reaches its pinnacle. But that's merely the start. Sunday also hosts Rise at the Casta de las Serenas at 1pm SLT, PWGP's Dream at Satana Arena at 4pm SLT, and UFW's Frontline at Frizona at 7pm SLT. Monday features Premier Wrestling Attitude at Vitality Arena at 1pm SLT, and UFW Unbroken at Frizona at 5pm SLT. As for Tuesday, we have BCW's Battle Zone at the Old Mill at 3 p.m. Second Life Time and HPW Infinity at Evergarden Civic Center at 6 p.m. Second Life Time. Then on Wednesday, Rise is set at the Goha Arena at 1 p.m. Second Life Time, followed by Valiant Wrestling Flashpoint at the Surge Stadium at 6 p.m. Second Life Time. The thrill continues on Thursday with the Premier Wrestling's Overload at the Vitality Arena at 1pm SLT, BCW Chaos at the Pemberley Theatre at 4pm SLT. Meanwhile, Friday showcases DCWF Slam City at 2pm SLT. VWE Defiance at the Grapital City Arena at 6pm SLT. UFW Nightfall at Frizona. And Elite Angel Wrestling at Sacred Island, both at 8 p.m. SLT. Lastly, Saturday concludes this exciting week with PWGP Risen at the Saitama Arena at 12 p.m. Second Life Time, Premier Unplugged at the Unicorn Garden at 1 p.m. Second Life Time, and WPWF Asylum at the Underground Arena at 6 p.m. Second Life Time. Brace yourselves for a memorable week as top-notch virtual wrestlers lock horns in Second Life. The previous week's wrestling scene in Second Life was nothing short of extraordinary. Across various franchises, we were privy to moments and matches that won't be forgotten soon. Absolutely, Tsukino. The upper crust of virtual wrestlers put on quite a spectacle, riveting viewers to their screens throughout the week with their remarkable performances. Let's not forget the unexpected turns and surprising outcomes that punctuated some of the matches. Excitement was in surplus in this vibrant world of virtual wrestling. I couldn't have put it better, Tsukino. We are about to dive into a recap of all the thrilling events from last week. Our viewers, brace yourselves for a wonderful trip down the memory lane of these phenomenal wrestling instances. The Women's Professional Wrestling Federation Asylum sure kicked off in style. As we opened the show, Soledad, the Lucha Doll, our surprise battle royale winner from the WPWF anniversary show, expressed her readiness for a title shot. However, her moment was soon interrupted by Carmelita Marcel, who was less than pleased with Soledad's win. A heated exchange between the two saw Abigail Katsu stepping in, eager to climb up the rankings and challenging both for separate matches. What a way to kick off the evening, Tsukino! Absolutely, Zach. 
We then moved on to match one where Foxy Beth and faced off against Venna the Kraken Gaptura. While the match began cordially, Foxy Beth demonstrated her might, pushing Venna to respond with her signature submission style. Foxy Beth clinched the victory with a timely roll up pin following a series of Foxy face busters. After the match, we saw Kimberly Smith, our newly crowned number one contender for the WPWF Sirens Rising Championship. She called out Leah Duffield to join her in the ring, resulting in a respectful exchange and Kimberly challenging Leah to a five series match, old school style. Leah agreed and the bell rang to kick off the first of the five bouts. In the second match, Kimberly Smith faced off against Leah, the doll Duffield. The match started with the sportsman-like conduct, evolving into an intense back and forth with neither contender willing to back down. Kimberly managed to land her signature underground knee, scoring the first victory of their five-match series. Rene Kadoya, our world champion for nearly half a year, then issued a bold challenge, calling out anyone daring enough to contend for her title. Katie M.F. Carter emerged intent on reclaiming the world title. With some harsh words exchanged, Katie asserted that she's a different contender now and is well aware of the Dragon's Maiden's tactics. The third match featured a fierce duel between Carmelita Marcel and Abigail Katsu. Despite a promising start from Abigail, Carmelita managed to regain control after Abigail missed a corner splash. A sequence of neck breakers and a well-placed coup de grace secured Carmelita's victory. The main event was a showdown between Chioko and the Crimson Luchador Kenya Escarlata. With her Isatsu tag partner Ri Kurihara at her side, Chioko set the pace only for Kenya to strike back with her agile maneuvers. Kenya attempted her four corner signature moves, but Chioko caught her mid flight, delivering a powerful backbreaker and a devastating last ride to clinch the win. The realm of professional wrestling has been a buzz this week, providing us with non-stop excitement. Given the incredible scenes we've witnessed, it's virtually impossible not to be eagerly anticipating the upcoming week. That's right, Zach. Make sure to stick with us for further adrenaline-charged moments and exceptional matches as the captivating story evolves. Turning our attention now to the captivating world of virtual cycling, we saw the Second Life Cycling Federation put on quite a show with their World B Day race. This fascinating event buzzed into action on May 20th, precisely at 2 p.m. Second Life time. Oh yes, Zach, it was such a vibrant display. Participants had the option to deck out in yellow and black outfits and don some wings. A delightful nod to our buzzing friends, the bees. And of course, everyone went home with a special B-themed trophy or memento, ensuring this unique event was unforgettable for all who took part. That's right, Tsukino, let's dive into the results, shall we? Claiming the top spot, the title of the fastest bee on two wheels was none other than MDE Belzebub Resident, or as we better know him, Sammy B. Congratulations to him. Absolutely well done, Sammy B. And hot on his heels, capturing second place was Nietzsche Neox, who showed impressive grit and determination. Rounding out our top three finishers was Atomic Infinity, another resident competitor. A huge congratulations to all participants for making this event so thrilling. Moving on to the lively realm of virtual basketball, there's some Greek madness brewing in Second Life. We're talking about the two versus two Greek madness tournament a double threat contest that's guaranteed to keep you on your toes. That's right, Zach. And guess what? The excitement begins this Sunday at 4 p.m. SLT with a special sign-up event and party. It's your chance to come out, enjoy the atmosphere, and join the tournament. And don't worry if you're riding solo. We've got you covered. Exactly, Tsukino. If you're looking to participate but don't have a partner, don't let that deter you. The organizers will ensure that everyone who wants to participate will be teamed up. This tournament truly embraces the spirit of inclusivity and excitement in the world of virtual sports. So mark your calendars and let the Greek madness begin. Turning our attention to the skies, the Fly for Life Expo in support of the American Cancer Society is taking flight in Second Life. It's all about improving the lives of cancer patients and their families, working towards the ultimate goal of ending cancer as we know it. That's right, Zach. Every cancer, every life. 
that's the mission. The expo is running from May 14th to 21st. We're looking at a full week of captivating events, exhibits, starting off last Sunday with the grand opening at 2 p.m. SLT. The event wraps up the week on Sunday 21st as the air racing concludes at 8 a.m. with winners announced and we are treated to a magnificent air show starting at 8.30 a.m. and going on until 2.30 p.m. This grand event features a lineup of breathtaking displays from various aerobatic teams. It certainly sounds like an unforgettable week in the sky, Zach. A chance to marvel at the aeronautics feats and contribute to truly vital cause. All this excitement is awaiting our viewers at the Fly for Life Expo. Don't miss out. That concludes this installment of ATG Sports Plus. We trust you found your rundown of the vibrant universe of the virtual sports engaging and informative. We're grateful for your company. Be sure to join us for the next episode of ATG Sports Plus. In the meantime, keep the ball rolling on the virtual field.